In this video, I'm going to show you how to put this particular shape on the chop for your benchcrafted glide leg vise. It's becoming a much more popular shape, but there's not any content out there on how to do it. So let me show you how to do it. It's super easy. It doesn't take a lot of time and it's actually really fun to do because it's a little different than some of the standard operations you might do in your shop. So let's just get right to it. This is the typical way that you would do a chop using the traditional plants from Benchcrafted. So it has a straight side, there's a radius to cut here and then a straight run down to the floor on both sides of the chop. And it's symmetrical like what I'm going to do, but they just put a chamfer on the top edge of the chop and a little bit kind of around the entire perimeter just using a 45 degree chamfer bit in the router. Let me start by just giving you a little bit of context for what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to kind of do is get this nice elegant taper put on the leg. And once we're finished with that, we're going to go and put the chamfers on all of the edges, except for the very, very bottom. We're going to leave it cut straight. But the chamfers are a little different because typically you would do them at 45 degrees. And what I've chosen to do is to set it back from the front face one inch and in from the edge an inch and a quarter. So it's not the standard 45 degrees. I think it gives it a much more custom look. And the chop is actually two and a half inches thick. And we're using black walnut for this. In order to shape the chop, I need to cut some tapers on here. I think you should see the line I've got here for where I want the taper on the chop to be and right here as well. I've got some double-sided tape on the back side of the chop and I'm just gonna use this carrier board to make a, a very simple, easy tapering jig in order to, to do this. So we'll just put it right on our line like so. So we're right on my line here and we're right on the other line across the side of the chop right here. I made the carrier board exactly 12 inches wide, so we just have to set the table saw up to 12 inches and zip it off. This first step is actually very easy. So once you've gotten the first taper done, you're simply going to flip the chop over and do the same thing to the other side. You're probably gonna to wanna to keep these off cuts because they may come in handy once you start hand planing some of the chamfers a little bit later on. I'm just gonna mark one inch from the front face for where I want the actual tapers or the chamfers on the front to be. So we'll just kind of take a couple of nice light passes there and run that all the way down here as well. The end grain is always a little bit hard to mark. So you just gotta take your time light passes. And then I'm just going to darken these in with a pencil so that I can actually see where this taper is actually going to end up being. It's a little bit of sap wood with the walnut here along the edges. So the pencil line is going to be actually fairly easy to see, I think, as I actually do this chamfer. And then in from the side, we're going to go an inch and a quarter. Okay, let's cut some chamfers. Making these cuts is tricky for two reasons. First off, you need to run the chop through the table saw up on its edges. And you need to do that because you can't get the blade beyond 45 degrees in order to allow you to set the chop flat on the table saw. So you need to set your blade to 38.66 degrees or just somewhere in between 38 and 39 degrees will be fine. It'll be close enough and nobody will know. But when you're running it through the saw, definitely make sure to hold the chop nice and stable. When you cut along the shorter vertical part of the chop, you definitely want to hold nice and steady and tight so that the chop does not allow its weight to make it tip whatsoever. You want to make sure that you get the chop nice and flat against the table saw for the entire cut so that you don't have a little bit of a mistake get made. The other thing you're going to want to do when you cut the chamfer on the top edge of the chop is use an auxiliary fence clamped to the fence on your table saw so that you can actually have some extra vertical support to make sure you're keeping the chop nice and perpendicular and that's going to ensure a nice consistent chamfer along the top edge of your chop. So there is a very minimal amount of cleanup that needs to be done here 
just from those saw blade marks. So we will just take the hand plane and get those out of there. For me, running the hand plane along these chamfers is one of the most pleasurable aspects of making and shaping this chop. Just watch right here as I take a few passes and all those saw blade marks just slowly disappear with every pass. It's so fun to watch this happen. Just the sound of the plane and everything that's going on is just amazing and I really find it relaxing when I do something like this. I've started using a lot more hand tools over the last few months so you're going to start to see more projects coming from me where I actually use hand tools a lot more and this project was fairly easy to do and a ton of fun so I hope you enjoyed it and until next time go build something beautiful.